Alright, so next in the series of Commander Duels, we have Eurobrask versus Eight and a Half Tails. So we've got a highly aggressive mono red deck versus a equipment based Voltron deck. So this will be another one of those duels that will end with damage rather than uh, too much combo or control. So there's Hall of the Band Lord to start things off. Kind of redundant in a Eurobrask deck, but it's always nice to have a plan B. Peter brings out his general. You'll notice we're actually playing on a table this time, um, graduating up from the floor. The problem is that I don't actually have like a tripod or anything for my camera. It's currently balanced on like an ironing board propped up against a footstool. That's barbed battle gear. Um, pretty mediocre equipment, but for a Voltron deck, it's a four power boost for a pretty low mana cost, so it does the trick. And Earthquake for two is a pretty uh, unefficient way to deal with eight and a half tails, but you have to kill that thing whenever Peter is tapped out because she can uh, protect herself with her ability. And the advantage of having a cheap general is you can keep bringing it out. Matthew's missing his land drop, so it's going to have to be Everflowing Chalice for one. Dust Bowl is always good against a mana screwed opponent. And eight and a half tails gets in there for a big six. So the general damage there is uh, in red at the bottom. With these kinds of decks that will uh, become significant, I think. Wheel of Fortune, kind of a desperation move. I think Matthew had seven cards in hand, but he really needs to hit a land. So there it is. damage from eight and a half tails. That's a pretty good Voltron general from Mono White because uh, you can make it unblockable. Um, White is really good at the equipment, so pretty much any general you pick can become a Voltron general. Uh, just sort of how you build around it. Eight and a half tails is a nice, uh, nice and cheap one. I think Voltron generals should generally try to be pretty cheap. Peter plays his own Everflowing Chalice down there. Obviously a powerhouse card. Double the False God is a good way to get out of a uh, Mana Screw situation. And Eurobrask makes his first appearance. He's going to have to stay back on defense though, because 8.5 Tails is pretty close to getting to that magic 21 points of general damage. Of course Peter can just pay 3 mana to make 8.5 Tails unblockable, um, but you know at least Matthew can force Peter to pay that mana. So there's a duplicate to take out Eurobrask. And of course, because Eurobrask doesn't go to the exile zone, it's not actually imprinted on duplicate. So a duplicate stays a 2-4. And Matthew's up to 21 points of damage from 8.5 tails. Flame Tongue Kabu is going to attempt to deal with the problem, but it's just that easy to pay 3 mana and make it protection from Flame Tongue Kabu. So there you go, it just shows how easy it is to win a game with a cheap general and a cheap equipment. So, Bard Battle Gear, um, 5 mana for a 4 power boost is pretty damn efficient. You don't need one of those expensive swords to go all the way with a Voltron general. Uh, that'll do the trick. So on to game 2. That was a pretty fast game 1. I think this one's going to go by uh, a little slower. Eurobrask is an incredibly slow deck. The mana curve basically starts at 5. It's basically just a big bunch of dragons and massive creatures. But the cool thing about the deck is that it's capable of doing huge amounts of damage in one turn. So that's what it's built around. Lots of pandemonium effects, gratuitous violence effects, stuff like that. So you can take someone from 40 to 0 in one turn. Mana Vault is pretty sick in this deck. Like I said, the mana curve starts at 5, so that thing's going to be really good. And I think most people will play it, just sort of use it as a dark ritual, and then sort of let it sit there 
and take one from it every turn, because it's kind of inefficient to try and uh, untap it for four mana. So Eurobrass makes an early appearance and gets in there. He's also capable of getting in for 21 dam uh, damage, but it doesn't happen as often. He's only four power. And there are not very many equipments in Eurobrask. The race is on. Uh, that's Peter's Soul Ring down there. Idyllic Tutor. You'll notice earlier he uh, used his Enlightened Tutor to grab uh, that Soul Ring. And uh, Idyllic Tutor is going to grab Imperial Plate. Auras are pretty good for Voltron. They kind of have negative synergy with Eight and a Half Tails because as soon as he gives it protection from white, those auras fall off. But some of them are obviously still very good. Aftershock, one of the most versatile cards in red. One of the few ways the red can reliably kill creatures, because burn generally isn't that great. Like I said before, you gotta kill Eight and a Half Tails whenever Peter is tapped out because that thing is a pain to deal with. And Sword Supply shares for Eurobrask. Obviously Matthew's life total doesn't matter a whole lot to Peter since he's trying to win with general damage. And out comes Eight and a Half Tails again. You'll notice both players are missing land drops at this point. I'm pretty sure both these decks are running a ton of land. It's just, that's how it's playing out, I guess. Comet Storm, another uh, really inefficient answer to Eight and a Half Tails, but why not? Peter's missing his land drop, but there's a Cold Steel Heart. Um, probably one of the worst mana rocks you can play in a uh, monocolor deck. That's pretty budget. Uh, Crucible of Worlds, though. That's a pretty solid card. Um, I believe he's running the whole Strip Mine, Wasteland, Tectonic Edge, Dust Bowl package in there. So the Crucible is pretty deadly. Speaking of deadly cards, there's a Shattering Spree for Peter's Artifacts. Uh, that's pretty one-sided for sure. Shattering Spree is a fantastic card in red. Matthew did, of course, miss his land drop again. And so does Peter, so he's going to be a jerk. Play Winter Orb. He's got the sort of sub-theme of uh, douchebag cards in this Eight and a Half Tails deck. Mono White is pretty good at that stacks theme. So if he can't get mana, I might as well drop a Winter Orb so that I can't get mana either. And it's just a lot of draw go right now. I promise this game is going to uh, become a little more interesting. And there's the Tectonic Edge. End of turn. Kind of a weird play. That's Chaos Warp for Matthew's own Mana Vault. It seems obvious to target the Winter Orb, but Matthew has so many dragons, if he can just hit one of them, and if it, if it hits the board underneath a Winter Orb, it's probably going to go all the way. But a Thran Dynamo is pretty awesome under Winter Orb as well. So that's uh, three mana every turn that doesn't get stuck under that stupid orb. And with Thran Dynamo down, I don't think Peter can rely on Winter Orb anymore. So he's got Oblation for it. Okay, so now Mana Troubles is starting to sort themselves out. Peter gets a land, and the Winter Orb is gone. So now we can start playing again. Stone Hero Giant. This is, of course, a very equipment-heavy deck. And Stone Hero Giant is pretty disgusting in decks like that. Out comes Eurobrask for 7 mana. And Peter's not going to trade his Stone Hero Giant for that, so he's going to take another 4. Stone Hero Giant is absolutely sick. Oh, and he's pretty good with Pure Steel Paladin, too. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you can draw a card. So that's a disgusting card advantage engine right there. Not to mention doing uh, boatloads of damage. He's going to grab Loxodon on Warhammer. Doesn't see a lot of play in EDH. I think it makes a lot of sense in this situation because Matthew is uh, a heavy damage deck, so the life gain is going to be very important for Peter. And yeah, tap down that Pure Steel Paladin, bitch. That's what your rest does. Balefire Dragon, one of those disgusting cards we just got out of Innistrad. That's going to clear away that nasty combo. Innistrad gave a lot of amazing cards from Mono Red. You got a. Railfire Dragon, Blasphemous Act, Past in Flames, which is very interesting, and uh, Charmbreaker Devils. Innistrad was very good to this Euro Brass deck. Dust Bowl for Peter.
and Catastrophe. Uh, one of the best sweepers. Um, I always like it in aggressive white decks because the Armageddon is obviously very good for aggro decks, but in this case he just needs a Wrath of God to kill away the Balefire Dragon and Urabrask. Voiding Dragon. Matthew is still stuck on four lands, so he's going to get a mana card and Gauntlet of Power. Notice that Hoarding Dragon actually needs to hit the graveyard for you to get that Gauntlet of Power, which makes it susceptible to stuff like Duplicant, which means you don't get the Gauntlet of Power. Yeah, Hoarding Dragon is pretty mediocre, to be honest. And Matthew's got the Rage Reflection. Uh, creatures you control have double strike. Obviously disgusting in a deck like this. And uh, I guess the important thing to note here is that Eurobrass can now swing for 8, which would be lethal. Unfortunately, he costs 9 mana at this point. And Peter's going to start gaining a ton of life with that Locks on a Warhammer as he drops the Imperial Armor. I believe he has 4 cards in hand right now. That's coming in for 11, which is a 22 point swing in damage. Yeah, Locks on a Warhammer really makes those numbers move a lot. And there's Conquering Manticore from Matthew, which is another disgusting tempo swing, because he's going to get that massive duplicant. Yeah, that Manticore shouldn't have haste, that's a, a mistake. I'm used to everything having haste because of Eurobrask. Uh, we noticed uh, a couple turns later and fixed the life scores. Um, but yeah, that duplicate did just swing for 22 thanks to the double strike, so that was a 44 point life swing. And now Peter is uh, running a bit low on life, especially facing a Rage Reflection. Memory Jar, that's going to help uh, boost Duplicate's power a bit because he's going to get to have 7 cards in hand for his attack phase. Memory Jar is of course very good in a red or white deck because those colors tend to be pretty shy on card draw. And uh, this 8.5 Tails does have a lot of low cast and cost cards, and Memory Jar does love cheap cards, because you can cast as much of those cards as you can before discarding your hand. So Duplicant gets in there for 14, I think? Yeah, another huge life swing, thanks to the uh, hammer. There's Ancient Tomb. It's a good way to fix Matthew's mana troubles. Uh, this looks like a playing mistake here. I should just cast Eurobrask and swing for the win, because uh, he can win the general damage. Oh well. Uh, instead, that's a big Earthquake for 8, which is just enough to kill off that duplicant. Get rid of that Imperial Armor, too. Earthquake is a classic for red. I'm pretty sure it should go in any mono red deck. Uh, red does like Wrath Effects, and uh, obviously if you're an aggressive deck, you want to... Uh, have ways to do damage to the dome, and Earthquake does that. Peter just played a Core Haven there. It's kind of out of the shot, but it's there. So that's going to give him uh, a reason not to scoop to Conquering Manticore just yet. Core Haven's very good, especially against a deck like this. And Matthew has the answer Ruination. So bye bye, Core Haven. And that's going to make Conquering Manticore lethal. And. Just for some icing on the cake, there's a Hellkite Charger, and that's going to be death. So on to game three. That last one uh, ended up being pretty interesting after the initial mana troubles. Locks and a Warhammer definitely made things fun. Another first turn on Lightning Tutor. Uh-oh, Peter realizes he has Soul Ring in his hand already, so what's he going to search for? Imperial Plate. One of the nastiest Voltron equipments, in my opinion. It's just, the amount of raw power you get for only 4 mana is uh, pretty disgusting on that card. And, you know we can't go through a whole video without a sense of divine top sighting. 8 and a half tails comes out. Everfalling Chalice for 1, that's gotta be like the best turn 2 play you can have in any deck. Not really, but, you know, I do like Everflowing Chalice, especially if you do not have access to all of the expensive mana rocks. And that's Peter's Soul Ring. Just going to give him enough to drop the Imperial Plate and swing for uh, five. Because he's already burning a lot of the cards in his hand. And 
once again, this absolutely disgusting red card makes an appearance. That's Shattering Spree. Very timely. Get rid of that equipment and Peter's Mana XL. There's Core Haven once again. Peter drops a Cold Steel Heart. I've changed my mind. That is the best turn to play in a monocolored deck. That's super budget. Wow. Thran Dynamo. Now there's a good mana rock. So Matthew's way ahead in the mana game. Peter is threatening quite a bit of uh, general damage. He's already up to 9. And there's a memory jar. Like I said, he's really low on cards on hand, so that's going to give him a huge boost next turn. And the aforementioned Charmbreaker Devils. This is probably my favorite card out of Innistrad. Uh, definitely an underrated card for EDH Red. I mean, that thing is just really good. There's a Shattering Spree in the graveyard there, so that's going to come back. Uh, however, the Memory Jar is going to potentially put more instants and sorceries into Matthew's graveyard. I mean, Charmbreaker Devils just does insane damage, and uh, he has utility that you kind of don't get very often in Red, uh, returning cards from your graveyard. So, I like it a lot. That's an Armored Ascension for 8.5 Tails, which is going to make it a 6 power flyer. Uh, which, yeah, I guess it's threatening to kill Matthew next turn, because now he's up to 15 general damage, and Peter has 4 planes out, so Matthew basically has a turn. <laughs> he actually didn't discard any instants or sorceries to Memory Jar, so the only target for Charmbreaker Devils is the Shattering Spree. Unfortunately, that Armored Ascension is not an artifact, it's an aura. So there's Shattering Spree to get rid of that Cold Steel Heart. That's going to pump Charmbreaker Devils up to an 8 4. Notice Peter does not have the mana for his Core Haven. In with Charmbreaker Devils. Savage Beating Entwined. That's going to make Charmbreaker Devils a 12 4 double strike. So he's going to hit for 24, gets another attack phase, and hits for 24 again. 48 damage in one turn with Charmbreaker Devils. That's a good way to uh, end the game, I think. Like I said, Charmbreaker Devils is disgusting. So thanks for watching, and please let me know if you want to see more.